Welcome to Tales and Travel Adventures. Let's visit Kenite, Canada. Hello, I am Lavana Hawkins with Champaign Public Library. Cranard Art Museum on the campus of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and Champaign Public Library have prepared this journey to Kenite in Canada for us to enjoy together. There are two ways you can use this program. You can just listen and follow along as I read the narrative that accompanies each slide. Or you or your partner can turn down the volume and use the controls to pause each screen so that you can read the narrative aloud yourself. You might also want to talk with your partner about what you are seeing or any memories that come to mind. Today, we will visit a small community in Northern Canada known for their Inuit art. Kenite has a population of 1,411 as of 2016, and 22% of the population list artist as their occupation. Kenite is the Inuit word for high mountain, referring to the nearby mountains. In 1631, the area was named Cape Dorset by Captain Luke Fox. It was known as Cape Dorset until December 2019, when the residents voted to officially rename the hamlet Kenite, its Inuit name. There are no roads to Kenite. Even the roads within the small town are just gravel or dirt and are not named. Traveling to Kenite requires an airplane. What words would you use to describe the feelings as this plane rises into the air? What would you see out the window? What do you imagine it will feel like as the plane begins to come down to land and then bumps into the ground? What sounds will you hear as you step out of the plane into the snow? Kenite is a tundra climate and has no trees. It has short, cool summers and long, cold winters. The record high temperature in the summer is only 77 degrees Fahrenheit and the low in the winter is negative 42 degrees Fahrenheit. An important part of the Kenite art community is the West Baffin Eskimo Cooperative, which includes the Kenite Print Studios. The West Baffin Eskimo Cooperative in Kenite has earned a worldwide reputation for the quality and originality of limited edition prints made by its member artists. Kenite artists also make carvings. Much of the native art portrays people in traditional tasks or images of the native wildlife. In the past, these carvings may have been created from walrus tusk, whale bones, or other animal materials. Today, they are largely done in soapstone. 
This is an example of a soapstone carving owned by Crenard Art Museum. Let's look more closely at this figure and create a story together. You, or someone with you, may want to pause the video to get a pen and paper and write down the story we imagine. As you look at this figure, is this a man or a woman? What do you want to say this person is doing? What do you imagine is being carried? How long shall we say they have been carrying this bundle? Where are they taking it? What words describe what this figure is feeling? When you look at their face, what feelings do you have? What do you want to say will happen next? What will happen to the bundle when they arrive? How do you want our story to end? The artists of Kenite have used their art to share stories of the Inuit culture for generations. When we look at the art, we can hear their stories. Thank you for visiting Kenite and viewing the art with me today. I enjoyed creating a story with you while we looked at the soapstone carving together. As we part, let's think about this. How are you creative every day? Questions? For materials to go along with this video, please contact Champaign Public Library at 217-403-2070 or the Yurtz Education Center, Crannard Art Museum, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. For information about using questions for a meaningful conversation, visit timeslips.org.